Do you ever find yourself living on autopilot? Here are three powerful questions you can ask yourself to get out of a funk and move forward. Hey guys, it's Anita and welcome to this video. life there comes a season when you're gonna find yourself doing something you either didn't expect or maybe didn't want or it's just or maybe you did want and it's not turning out the way you wanted to so part of life is just learning how to be resilient and make the most of these situations and move forward and grow from them self-reflection through journaling mostly is one of my favorite ways to get clarity and direction on how to move forward in life now, if you're not a fan of journaling, you don't have to do this. I just find that writing out my answers and being able to see them really helps me to see where I'm getting stuck in life and how I want to move forward. When I found myself moving back to the city after about six years of travel, I knew that this was probably not going to be forever, but it was going to be what I call my season of the city. I haven't lived in a city in one place and working a job for a long time, actually ever. So this was just gonna be a chance for me to try a different kind of lifestyle that I hadn't before. I love to write questions and then free write my answers. This means I give myself a couple minutes, sometimes it's like half an hour if I have the time, to just write out my response and to really take the time to hear from God, if you believe in God, or just to hear from a higher wisdom to understand why this is happening to me and how I can do better or learn. The first question to ask yourself is what am I learning in this circumstance that I wouldn't be able to learn otherwise? No matter what situation you're in, even if it seems like your world has completely fallen apart, it's still an experience that you can walk through and you can move through. And no matter what, every situation has gifts. Sometimes we like to look at other people's lives and think they have it all figured out, but honestly, every circumstance that life brings us is so that we can learn something. There are always practical lessons to any life situation. So for example, if you're stuck in a job that you don't really like right now, you're still going to learn how to work with a team, how to work with a manager, how to manage a workload, how to pack your lunch. There's also personal lessons you're gonna learn in every situation. Maybe it's things like learning humility, learning how to heal your heart, learning resilience, all these intangible things that also make us human. So for me, when I started a job in the city, I knew that I would get to learn lessons here that I wasn't gonna to get to learn by being a solo entrepreneur. So I've gotten to learn things and I'm still learning things like how to manage my time, how to manage projects, how to deal with people. And then on the personal side, I knew that I needed the time to heal my heart, to figure out my psychology, to find my identity again, to really dive deep into my soul and to figure out myself spiritually. These were all things that I knew I wouldn't be able to learn if I was constantly figuring out if I should go to South America or Europe or just where I was gonna live and eat next. Here, I don't have to worry about where I'm gonna live and what I'm gonna eat. Those are things that are quite easy to figure out when you live in the city. But there are other things like the practical side and the work side of my life that I've been able to figure out because I'm rooted in one place. So write this question at the top of the page and then give yourself five minutes to journal out your answer. The next question to write at the top of your page and ask yourself is, when I look back on this season from the other side, what will I wish I had done or become? This is about looking forward into the future and realizing that this season of your life, no matter how good or bad you think it is, one day it's going to end. And you're going to look back and realize that there are certain things that you probably could have done better. So we can do that right now and figure out what are the things that I'm going to wish I did now instead of just humming and hawing or complaining about how the situation isn't ideal. Every season of life is unique and it's going to have its advantages and its disadvantages. It's up to us individually to figure out what are the advantages and to maximize them and to just let the disadvantages be something that makes us stronger and wiser. So for example, if you're a parent right now and you're raising small children and you don't have as much time to work on your career as you want to, 
this is where we get to make choices. And this is the benefit of self-reflection. You can make a choice to accept it and just treasure this time with your children, or you can look at the situation and make a choice to change it. But either way, at the end of the season, when your kids are grown up or even more grown up, even just five years from now, will you look back and wish that you'd spent more time with your kids or will you look back and regret that you didn't keep doing the work that you loved on the side? It's the same if you're working or if you're unemployed right now. Let's say you're unemployed. This is a time of your life where you actually have all the time to yourself. Yes, you might be stressing about money and that is a disadvantage, but the advantage that you do have is all of the mental space to think through what you really want in life and how you can get it. So don't waste that either. Don't just apply to a bunch of jobs you don't want and then watch Netflix while you wait for job responses to come in. Instead, you can spend some time, even if you don't have the money, you still have the time to look into other career opportunities or what kinds of jobs could you get with your current skill set. So I did the same thing for myself and I asked myself this question. When I leave the city one day and when I leave these jobs I have one day, assuming that I'll leave the city and these jobs, what will I look back and wish I did? A big thing for me was I knew that I didn't want to feel like I escaped early. When you're traveling, it's pretty easy to just leave a difficult situation because you're traveling and that's part of it. And while there is a sense of freedom and there's a beauty in that, there's also a particular grit and tenacity that comes from staying in one place and seeing the situation through. So I knew that I'm gonna stay in Toronto for a bit and see what happens. Another thing that I wanted to get out of this season of my life was I wanted to prove to myself and I guess to other people too that jobs don't have to suck and that there is a way that you can live this life in the city, in the matrix and still thrive. This was important to me because I actually spent a lot of my early 20s hating on the city and I mean I loved Paris and I loved most European cities but I didn't really like the concept of people feeling like they're trapped in the city, they're trapped in a job and they can't get out. Like I had traveled and I felt so free and I wanted other people to feel that too. However, I kind of ended up going really far on the spectrum of like hating and being afraid of city life and so I knew I just needed to be here in a city and just try to figure it out and figure out if I could thrive. I knew it was possible but I had to do it. And so that's why I made the transition at the beginning of this year to like figuring out how can I make my life in the city so good, so joyful, and like so full of the things that I want it to be full of that I don't even want to leave. A way of framing my life that helps me to see what I need to learn or accomplish in every season of my life is to see it as an assignment. If there was an exam at the end of a couple of years, if I were to give it to myself, what will I wish that I had learned? What will I want to see that someone else had learned and accomplished from the season? You know, did she become more brave, more generous, more wise, more kind, more compassionate versus did she become more arrogant or greedy or um, depressed? Those are benchmarks for me of how I know that I'm growing. The third question to ask yourself to get out of a funk and move forward is, what is the season that my soul wants to transition into? The feeling of being stuck is already a sign that there's a part of you that wants to grow into something. The feeling, the feeling of being stuck is already a sign that you're ready to grow into a different stage of life. This could be a really obvious stage, like a different part of your career, or getting married, or having kids, or it could be more intangible, like, I'll use myself as an example. So I used to think of myself as a girl. I spent a lot of my early 20s traveling and while that was great, most people are not still traveling the way I was traveling when they're 40. And as much as I love the freedom and all of the lessons I learned in my youth, I also knew that there was more wisdom to be found in allowing myself to mature and learning to see myself as a woman. Now that transition from a girl to a woman is very fuzzy in our society. We don't really have a rite of passage. I guess graduating school and getting your first job is kind of a rite of passage, but there's also a lot of people who go from school to getting a job and they never quite grow up. Whereas I really wanted to figure out what it would be like to live my life and to treat myself like a woman. 
still a young woman, but someone who has a bit more depth and wisdom and direction in life than just a girl who's traveling. And I also wanted to honor who I was, the journey I'd been on as a traveler, and integrate all of the lessons and allow myself to grow. It, it was actually quite important to me that I don't leave who I am behind because there's definitely still a traveler soul in me. But I also allow myself to grow knowing that um, just like a plant, some plants, they'll grow even stronger if you leave them in one place and then you transplant them versus trying to grow a small plant and like transplant it to a different garden every three months. So once it became clear to me that I knew I wanted to grow into a woman, I actually began to explore what it means to be a woman. So that's been through things like reading books, observing other people, and even just looking at other women that I admire. What is it that I admire about them? And how do they live their lives differently? A lot of them do travel, but they travel differently and with more intention. And so these are all the things that I've just been absorbing into my soul. And that has really helped me to have clarity and direction for the season of my life, knowing that I'm not just here in the city aimlessly with a job, just because that's what people do, but it's because there's something I want to grow into and become in this season. So once you've answered these three questions and really given yourself a chance to flesh these answers out, it's time to name your season. This is just something that I started doing because I found it helpful and I wanna share it with you because I haven't really met anyone who does this and it's made my life so much better. So name the season and feel free to rename it. So I actually have a notebook full of uh, lists. I've named this season things like obviously season of the city, you know, season of solitude, season of stillness, season of being single, like so many different things I've written and it evolves over time depending on what I'm going through. I, I don't really consider it my season of stillness anymore, but there was a couple months when I just needed that. Now this is more my season of integrating my creativity and my job, and that's exactly what I'm doing. Then once I have mastered this, there might be a season of transitioning out of a job or transitioning into a different kind of job. Whatever it is, having that clarity is what helps me keep moving so that I never feel stuck, even though I might still be in the same job, still be making videos like this, there will be elements of my life that are constantly shifting and moving forward because I can see where I'm trying to move forward to. So once you've thoroughly answered these questions, they become like a roadmap for you. I recommend checking in with these questions about every six months, even every quarter. Um, and if you're going through a time of like super change, Check in every month with these questions and you'll notice that you will actually grow into the things that you see. You will actually learn the lessons that you want to learn and you will become the person that you want to become. And it's because you're doing it intentionally. That simple act of reflection already gives a sign to your psyche and to your soul that, yes, I can do this, I'm doing this, this is where I'm going. Before I leave you, I have to say something about timing. When you're feeling like you're in a funk, it's very easy to look at other people and feel like so-and-so is further along, more advanced in their career, making more money. But the reason I love these three questions and this process of self-reflection is that it forces me to acknowledge my growth and it allows me to see who I want to grow into. Um, and especially it makes me reflect on the personal lessons and the personal progress I've been making. The personal progress is a lot less obvious than professional progress, right? It's hard to see for someone else to see if I've become more compassionate, kind, or humble, or generous, but I know if I have. And that's the stuff that's much more important in the long term than just making more money or having a better looking career. So be okay with other people looking like they're further along. Keep going through these questions at your own pace, let yourself grow, give yourself the time and space to grow. So give this a shot. Write these three questions at the top of a page, one page per question, and then let yourself free write the answer. And then see how you feel. Does it give you clarity and direction? And does it allow you to have more focus for your life? Now, if this is the first time you're trying journaling, you might find this quite awkward, but stick with it. Just let yourself free write, put on some inspiring music and see what comes out. I promise you this works wonders. If you found this video helpful and you like 
more videos about work, creativity, and just balancing and creating a beautiful life, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to follow me on Instagram where I share my photography, writing, and behind the scenes of my creative journey. I'm Anita, and I'll see you in the next one.